Okay, guys. Um, as I refix my dirty hair and as I sit here sweating because I just got out of a, a CrossFit class, I want you guys to know how excited I am for today's speaker. Um, Donna Lee and I kind of came up in sort of like, I call it like the same pledge class of diamonds. And we were, I was watching her progress because I noticed right away, one of the things that caught my attention with both Donna Lee and her sister, Laura, is that they were working medical professionals when they came into Plexus. And I'm going to let her tell you about her story, but just a few things you need to know is that Plexus was a side gig for her. Her passion uh, was, and I'd say still is obviously, um, really helping people with their health. And what, what I loved as a mental health professional was that she was speaking to it as both a nurse and a lactation consultant and a fellow kind of crunchy person. Um, she and I have served on the product focus group with Plexus together. We've been a part of rebrand. Here's what I like and love about Donnelly. She is totally smart with the products and Donnelly, I bet I bet you still get bombarded with product questions like I do, but what I really love is that she is passionate about the business and she has gotten into momentum over and over and over again, kind of as, as you work to the top of this company, you're often like rethinking things and refiguring out how to be a leader how to how to build new leaders and that's something that Donnelly is really good at so here's the other thing she like me has been through hard stuff e even just personally I think we've both been through miscarriages while on our plexus journey and just some of the heartache that can come with going into those kind of crises so what I want you to know especially as you listen today and I hope you take notes is that um the people that we have come and speak on these calls are not just, this isn't fluff. It's not like, oh, it's just all been easy and happy. It's people who've really learned to be resilient and persevere. So um, I'm not going to take up any more of your time, Donnelly. I'll let you tell everyone about yourself, but take it away. Well, thank you for that amazing welcome. <laughs> um, like Becky said, I am Donnelly and I've been with Plexus now for nine years and I'm a registered nurse by trade. Um, but like she said, I came in um, and I came in for the business and it was never, this was never going to be an opportunity for me that I was going to stop working. Like I never really thought that. And I think a lot of times we just start these, you know, what type of things thinking that, you know, it's just going to be for a little while. And my sister was my sponsor and she's also a diamond. And she just said one day, Hey, let's do this. And we're like, okay, sure. You know, um, and we just, we just did it. We just, you know, we, we started and what I'm going to talk about today is, um, vision casting, but we just started casting that vision for ourselves. And for her, it was, you know, I want to pay off $80,000 of student loans. And for me, it was, you know, maybe this will help me to be able to not work as much because at first I couldn't quite see being able to stop working because I had a great career as a nurse. So the thought of not working and doing what I went to school for, it wasn't even something I thought about. So it was more like, Hey, let me work one day less a week. I had a little kid at home and, um, that is what I, I was looking for at first. So, um, obviously that worked out, but I want to talk to you so much today about how important it is to have that strong vision and where you're going and how that really lays a foundation because, I really think had I not had that belief that it was possible, even though I've never done direct sales, I've never done anything like this. I've always been in the medical field from um, when I was, I have been working since I was 14. And um, so I was a lifeguard for several years and I worked in physical therapy. Um, I Then I was a nurse for a long, long time before Plexus. And then I still have a private practice where I go out in our community and help moms and babies. So um, I am always <laughs> working, but I'm doing the things that I love. And that's also great about what we do, right? That you that is an option now. And that is something that I enjoy doing. So, um, I was honored to be featured in one of the, um, momentum makers book series to talk about vision casting. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, because I think, like I said, truly, that is why I am here because right from the start, I had that clear vision. Um, and even though it changed and it continues to 
change. I saw that in my sister and I have seen that in everybody who's had success in this business, that it may start out accidental. And then there's a vision and you know where you're going, because if you don't, you can't really bring your team along with you. And, um, you know, people aren't going to want to join you. So I, that's what I have found personally. That is, you know, key. So let's get started. So, um, I am going to be sharing a little bit, um, of a story with you right now. So um, imagine, you know, your business is like an elevator, right? Like you have this big company. Cause I always tell my team, think about your business, like a storefront, right? How would you work it? You wouldn't just like not show up some days, right? Or maybe you like show up and you're like, well, I'm not going to come in on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Well, we know that small amounts of consistency are really what makes the difference. And you can't just like not show up. We have to be showing up. So imagine your company, right? And you have this elevator and all of these new people walk into your company and, you know, we're all on the first floor. And a few of them get on the elevator and they go all the way to the top, all the way to the eighth floor. And you know that every single floor brings a new opportunity, right? There's something else on that floor. And that's kind of true in, in every large building, right? There's something different on every floor. Um, but what is it that propels certain people to go all the way to the top, right? Like, what is it that really makes these people go from the first floor to the eighth floor, the 10th floor, you know, whatever it may be, um, because it's easy to get off on each floor, right? It's easy to not go all the way. So what I am trying to cast for you here is that this is the vision of your business, right? That, you know, you don't get to just get off on floor one or never get on the elevator, even though that will be some of your team's path. And that will be some of the people that you bring on in the future. That is their path. Their path is not to go to the top. And, and I think, um, along the way, I've really had to bring, um, I don't know, like even for myself, like just bring the ego down and take myself out of it and say, not everybody has the same goal as me to go to the top, right? So sometimes their path is going to be getting off on the second floor or the third floor, and maybe not even getting on the elevator at all. Um, but that's their vision. And that's kind of where I'm going with this, that that is a clear vision potentially for them that, you know, they want this, right? But we might want this for them. So I think really defining with your team that vision helps with your own expectations and how to lead them. And it leads to just more satisfaction in the business. Because um, if you have a team, you know how frustrating it can be to pull people along when you're pulling them to your vision, but we're not really like working towards their vision. So always keep that in mind um, that, you know, that is important. So when we talk about vision casting, a lot of times we wonder where, where do these visions come from, right? Like, you know, you're, you're telling me to vision cast, but, and it actually, no, it really does happen in your brain. And um, so there's a science behind it and it's called neuroplasticity. Um, I do have a really cool video to screen share with you. Um, but basically it's a structure function and chemical changes that occur in your brain. So you can rewire your brain. Um, you can rewire your thinking. There's a lot of this, um, just obviously with mental health and how to change the way that you speak to yourself and the things that you see and just your behavior in general, but neurons are nerve cells and they're the building block and they transmit information and signals throughout your body. And they allow you to see, think, and feel. And really that's who, that's who you are. Right. And we know that there is this huge connection between the gut and the brain as well. So how incredible is that, that we can tie that in with our teams when we're talking about vision casting too. But um, so vision casting involves, you know, creating all of these new connections in your brain to really change the way that you think. And this is really important when we're talking about vision casting, because the way that you think about yourself is going to determine how you cast vision for where you're going. So our brain is this puzzle, right? So 24 hours a day, our brain is go, 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 go. Um, we have all these thoughts about what we're doing, the people around us, ourselves, our kids, our work, right? It's just a continuous highway. So we really do have to commit to creating a vision for our business and taking that time to really see where you're going because it is busy, right? And our brains and we're, there's a constant conversation essentially going on. Um, so the way that we talk to ourselves and see where we're going is really going to determine the actions that you take to get there. 
So the number one thing that I think is important when we are learning to cast vision, it's self-awareness. So great leaders have a very high um, sense of self-awareness. And I love working with people who are self-aware. It's such a treat. And I'm sure you guys can, can um, agree to that. So, and this isn't necessarily like their only strength, but it's important that um, when you are self-aware, you're aware of thoughts, right? That's the number one thing. I'm aware of my thoughts and I know how to change them, right? So if I'm being really negative or I'm um, talking, you know, bad about myself in my head, you know, we, we, we have these patterns. I caught myself this morning. Um, my sister and I are in the middle of, this is a total side note, but we're in the middle of doing something for a side project that we're doing. Um, and I caught myself being like, what if no one wants what we have? <laughs> like, and I'm like, no, that is not true. And you have to, you have to face that thought right away to change it because you cannot let those things fester. So instead of that, I was like, everybody is going to love what we're putting out and they need it. <laughs> so it's important to change those things because it happens to us too. You know, just because your diamond doesn't mean that you, your thinking is perfect all the time, but you just, you have to be really hyper aware of those thoughts and that's where self-awareness comes in. So you're aware of your thoughts and your behavior and your patterns. Um, and that's what's necessary to rewire your brain. So a little example of this would be, you know, driving home from work, right? So a lot of times if, if you were commuting to work or maybe your kid's school or, you know, wherever you go, a lot of times we all take the same path, right? We take the same right turn down to the stoplight and then we go left. And honestly, it's kind of like autopilot. Every single time we take that same route, right? We go to the grocery store, whatever it is. Um, and because we are seeing the same stuff over and over and over again, our brain, there's not like new wiring that's happening. There's not new patterns that are happening. Um, our brain is really good to also be set for autopilot because we have different muscle memory. We have different neural connections. So all of that, right? So our brain's just like, Hey, I know this, right? Just kind of like riding a bike. Think about that, right? We're on a bike. We don't have to think about it anymore because that is what we're doing. So I wanted to say when we are what happens? Okay. What happens if you're driving when we're going somewhere and you take a different pathway, right? You take a whole nother path. Instead of going right today, you decide that you're going to go left and you're going to take the scenic route. Okay. You see things a little differently. You may even decide that, okay, this is, I actually prefer this new route, right? So how many times have you had the option to go two different ways, right? One's a fast way. One's a scenic route. And you might be surprised that when you take the way that you don't normally take, this creates new neural pathways. Um, and this is going to help you to continue to learn differently. And all of these things, when you do something differently, you have new experiences, you immerse yourself in um, new conversations, I mean, really new experiences, right? So that's what we tell people to get out of their comfort zones. But all of this builds those neural pathways so that you can continue to rewire your brain and be able to level up your business and have a different set of visions for where you're going. And so um, every single decision that you make starts with a, I will or I won't act upon this, right? So we think about it in the morning, like we wake up, should I make coffee? Well, I will or I won't, right? Um, should I get dressed today? I will or I won't. Should I brush my kid's hair? I will or I won't. And these decisions start to build upon those actions and ideas along with our business, right? So we wake up and we're like, hey, um, I know that I need to reach out to so-and-so, right? I need to do my follow-ups or I need to create an entirely new network, right? And then we have, I will or I won't. And the way that we act upon those decide the actions of where we're going in our business. So when you have that strong vision for your business, you are going to be able to act upon those decisions and those options that are brought to you so much easier because you're aligned with where you're going. And when you don't have a vision, it's really easy to, when those, um, when those questions or options come up to be like, eh, I don't know, I don't really want to do that today. You know, when you're your own boss, you are your own boss. Like you have to be showing up for yourself in your business because no one's going to do it for you. No one's going to push you. You might have a power partner or someone who, you know, your upline who's like, okay, here's what we're doing, but it is ultimately up to you. So 
That is why when you have a strong vision, it's going to be way less likely that you are going to waver and you are going to stick with it. Um, another thing that I think is important for being able to create vision for yourself is taking time for yourself. So I know for the first probably, I mean, I would say the first couple of years in this business, it was really hard for me to take time off. And I found, found that as a side note, you know, I was teaching my team that I'm talking about being diamond and having all this time freedom, but I'm actually not showing them that I have any time freedom at all. So I think that's important because when you're able to rest and relax and really take that time to not only reflect, but continue to think about the thoughts and the actions and things that are aligned with moving you towards that ultimate, ultimate vision for your business you are able to execute that differently versus when you are constantly working in a stressful environment. And when you don't take breaks, you are in a constant fight or flight chaos situation where you're no longer seeing your business as something positive or something that necessarily reinforces um, like good feelings for you, right? We started seeing as a space of um, frustration and stress. And even if it's going well, it's just going to be like, okay, I need a break, but I feel like I cannot take a break. And that's not why we do this. Right. So, um, really thinking about your vision casting, it's whole body. So if you are feeling off, you need to take some time off. Um, and I'm not saying like, Hey, I'm just not going to work this whole month. I just mean, take a breather, like go for a walk, go take a nice long bath, go do something nice for yourself, reset, and then come back. Um, okay. So the other thing I want to talk about is that, um, with vision casting. So I'm like a firm believer that things happen twice, right? So first in your mind and second in your actions. And I feel like we can kind of hijack that. And the way that we do that is with embodiment. So I have always thought that um, vision casting is, our vision is married to embodiment. Like, here we go. They are married together. Um, and I have felt that because once you know where you're going, you can show up like you, you're you already there, right? So if you're like, hey, you know what? My ultimate goal is to be diamond. And when I'm diamond, I'm going to talk like this. I'm going to walk like this. I'm going to wear this. I'm going to show up on the Zooms like this. Um, I'm going to do these things, right? So we have like this list of things that we want to do ultimately. But a lot of these things you could start implementing now, right? So for me, I found like in this process over the years, in the beginning, even though it got me to diamond, I was just like showing up for the sake of showing up, which is great, by the way, I'm just saying you should still show up. But over time, I thought, well, what would my business look like? And who would I attract if I showed up a little bit differently, right? I was still myself, but I was like taking where I was here to right here, right? So I was feeling more confident. I was dressing differently. I was speaking differently. I was um, hanging around my friends who owned businesses. I was, you know, I was trying to create and attract a different style of people now. And you're going to find in your business, like your life is going to change throughout your business. Um, for me, like I see this, this is a business that I want to have forever. Right. And I want to be able to give it to my children and so on. So, um, you're going to have life seasons where your life is different. Right. So you're going to constantly be changing as well. But if you're like, Hey, I really like to follow this person or that person and they really embody success for me. And I, I just love, like, I love this about them and I love that. And I would love to be that way, be that way, show up that way. And it's not about fake it till you make it. But if you want to truly create new pathways in your brain and new connections and a new vision, start embodying where you're going. Like you can bring in those attributes. Now you can show up how you want to show up. You, you don't have to wait for permission from anyone and start doing it because at first it's going to feel weird. <laughs> you're going to be like, Oh, this doesn't feel like me, but then you're going to start attracting different people. You're going to start feeling so much more confident and you're going to be excited, right? Because you're going to, you're, you're showing up like a diamond when you're a silver and there's nothing wrong with that. I would 100% rather my team show up like a diamond and show up like they've already made it with all that confidence and excitement than showing up and saying, oh, I don't really know. 
yeah, maybe someone will like what I do. I don't know. You know, like it's all about how you embody where you're going. So the definition of that just says to be an expression of, or to give a visible form to an idea, quality, or feeling. And I think a lot when we talk about, you know, vision and embodiment for me being married, vision's kind of like the headpiece, like all of our thoughts and the embodiment is how we bring it into life and into action in what we're doing in our practice. Right. So like really think about, right. So the people that you admire or where you want to go, um, how do you show up? How do you act? What is the most authentic version of your future self, right? Because that's really what we're trying to show up as. Um, how does your vibe match where you're going? Um, and what kind of actions do you need to take to get from where you are now to where you're going? And at first, this might, like I said, it might feel strange, right? It might be like, oh, this just does not feel like me. Like, I really want to be here, but <laughs> I don't feel like I should be here, but that is where you should be, right? Because you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone to um, embody everything that you want in this business and who you want to be. So vision casting is really seeing it, believing it, and then showing up like you've already got it, right? So I really think that that is so important. That's really what I am um, speaking over my team lately that, um, you know, you can't just vision cast because that's great. And you can tell everyone where you're going, but your actions also have to align with that. Um, and that's going to keep you going on those hard days. So, you know, we're vision casting and we're creating this path for ourselves and we're planting the seeds in our own mind and we're doing new things and pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. And then it's like, it happens, right? Like things start falling into place. And when you've already embodied these changes, you are, you're here for it. You're showing up like you're ready to go and everything falls into place so much smoother. So always be thinking about that, you know, right now, like if you're sitting here and you're watching this and you're like, and I really don't know what I'm doing with this business. I like being a part of the community. I love the products, you know, maybe I could do the business, like really take some time to just sit and be, and think about what your future would look like in three different ways, like break it down. If I did this, what would this look like? If I did this, what would this look like? If I did this, what would this look like? And start seeing it and really taking time every day to see where you're going, whether you go for a walk or you, you know, sit in your room, you know, I mean, whatever it is, find a quiet space and just see, really just see where you're going. Um, because that, I think for me, when I look back and I try to pin something that I did in my behavior that really changed the trajectory of my business, it was vision casting. And not only did I nail down my vision. So at first it was, you know, this will be the opportunity that lets me work less. Right. But then when I got a taste of what we offer and how great everything is, I thought, no, this is going to be the opportunity that lets me stay home with my daughter. I had one then now I have three girls. <laughs> so I have three plexus babies. Um, but that really changed it for me. And not only did I speak that over myself over and over and over and over again, to the point that if someone was to say that will never happen to you, or you're always going to be working as a nurse in the hospital. Like, I mean, I had people say those things to me, but I spoke it over myself and I believed it so strongly that no one's opinion or thoughts of me were ever going to change where I was going in this business. And that is where you have to get, right? You have to get to such a point and such strength and conviction and where you're going that it doesn't matter what people say about what you're doing or how you're doing it, because you know so strongly that that will happen for you. And that is how strong vision casting is. So I want to share my screen really fast. Let's see here if I'm able to do that. I don't know if I'm able to. What do you think? Andrea, can you? Yeah. I might need to be like co-host. But I want to show you guys a really cool video. 
It should work now, down. Okay. Let's see. Okay, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. <laughs> okay, so if we can't figure it out though, let me see. Okay, try it now. It. Andrew, I think you may okay. need this only. There you go. Got it. Thank you guys. Okay, here we go. Let me see. You think I never used this before. <laughs> this is it. Nope. Oh, that was it. Hang on. Sorry, guys. Sorry, that's taking me so long. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to try one more thing. <laughs> All righty. I think I got it. Okay. So I want you to watch this. This is the most amazing video of your brain creating a new pathway with neurons. So when you learn something new, this is what happens in your brain. So how cool is that? <laughs> I think that that is the coolest thing, but I'm kind of a nerd too. So, but like that is literally what happens in our brain when we learn something, something new, we take a new path, like we push ourselves out of our comfort zone. These things are what are necessary when we vision cast, right? Because when we vision cast, we're tricking our brain into thinking that these things have already happened because we're seeing them with such confirmation. So that's where you have to get in your business so that no one can sway where you're going. That's it, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. And you know, that that is so much of what I even taught in cognitive behavioral therapy is just the importance of, I used to call it getting out of the rut, you know, in your brain, because that those neurons have formed these like grooves and it actually is uncomfortable mm -hmm. to take a different route, you know, to try to think differently or to change a belief or, or to even, to even cast vision is, I feel like one of the things that I, I try to tell people is it will be uncomfortable mm -hmm. to do this for a while, but I love seeing those little neurons start to form because it's such a reminder of it's happening, right? Like even in the discomfort, whatever, whatever you're doing for me, the discomfort for so long was reaching out to people to invite them into Plexus because all I wanted to do was to attract them without having to talk to them. <laughs> And, and, you know, and that was standing in the way of my own belief because my belief was, well, they should just be attracted to me yes. <laughs> as if people yeah. are just, you know, that's what they're doing. But I think about how much has changed after working on something uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. So I love that. I want to, um, if you've got time, I want to open it up for questions. And um, if you are on this call and you have a question, I just want you to not wait um, and just go ahead, take the time, ask, you can um, unmute yourself, turn your camera on if you're at a place where you can do that and just go ahead and ask the question in person. And I'm going to mute and I'm going to make some space for y'all's questions. Okay, I'm reading through the comments real quick. Okay. Um, as far as like a, a specific book, um, I actually, you know what I do? I, let me, let me get the name. I follow a couple different doctors on Instagram where they talk specifically about, um, rewiring your brain. So I will, I probably do this every day. I will search the hashtags, like rewire your brain, neuroplasticity. And there are so many different doctors and methods, but I think now people are starting to learn more about it. So I will just dive into that. And I watch the videos. I share the content. I, a lot of times there's stuff that I can still share with my teams, which is great. 
And as a parent, there are things that I learn about sharing with my kids, like getting them back to crawling. A lot of my, all of my kids pretty much skipped crawling and they have different like learning disabilities and behavior things. And I mean, not like you wouldn't know looking at them, but like I know as a parent. So this is so encompassing. So I will like, I pretty much just search hashtags, rewire your brain, neuroplasticity, um, neural connections. And I also search like, um, vision casting and mindset, things like that, because you're going to pull up, there's a ton of doctors and mental health professionals that share all this. So I, I mean, instead of like diving into a book, I, I will be on Instagram learning about it <laughs> and it's so easily accessible, the information these days. Donnelly, I have a question. You have built an incredible team and yeah, I see you and Laura both like y'all love researching this. You love what, I mean, we've gotten to watch you grow your families over the last nine years. And just as peers and as friends, we've gotten to watch that whole side of your world change. Um, you know, there's, you're working on this new project that we're getting to watch kind of come to fruition um, as you're helping other moms learn how to do their business alongside mm-hmm. raising kids. How do you balance all of this stuff? Like, do you time block? Do you spend it? Like, how do you actually, cause because we know as diamonds, you want to continue to grow this legacy because everything we're pouring into this business actually comes out for not only ourselves and our own personal income, but what, what we do with our kids 20 years from now, these paychecks could still continue to come in based on the work we're doing right now. So how do you do all of these amazing projects? I think God has just gifted you with like light bulb after light bulb as you've been so intent, you've been so obedient to each light bulb moment. I feel like that he's been like, and here's another one. Here's another, here's another thing. I um, I, it's, it's hard to shut it off. <laughs> but how do you, um, work your, how do you work your intentional business at the same time? So time blocking a hundred percent. Um, so me and my sister are, so are, so through this process, we have been able to bring home our husbands, but they both work now, but in different roles. So mine was a nurse. We met in nursing school and my sister's um, husband does like, he does some facility management. So he's busy a lot. He has his own company now. So that's, what's great, right? You can, you can start over and do something different, but um, so they both work, I would say kind of part-time. So we do have that help. And so with knowing we all are entrepreneurs in our, in our own sense. So we create our schedules around each other. So for me and my husband, like we kind of, it's like kind of back when we were, were in uh, working as nurses, we would like work opposite days basically. And that's kind of what we do now. However, I still work every day, but I time block. And typically the way I work is I will work in one hour time blocks. Um, and that is, so I will usually work an hour of set time in the morning and an hour in the afternoon before I get my kids from school. Um, and that helps me to be able to get everything in. Now, obviously that will change when I have different zooms or different commitments and things like that. Um, I mean, I can get so much stuff done if I have an hour of set time. Like, I mean, I will blow your mind with what I will get done in an hour, (laughs) but that has taken time, right. To know how to prioritize your day and what activities to do in that time. So something that Laura and I did and what Andrea is talking about is we created something called Forts to Fortunes. And basically we've like created nine years of experience of parents in this, in this type of business with activities to do with your kids and time blocks that are like appropriate for their age. And we were totally called to do that because we thought so many people in our network and our, and our team, like have trouble knowing what to do with their kids to keep them busy while they're working. Right. So you have to get on zoom. What am I going to do with my kids for 30 minutes? Um, I have a nine-year-old, a five-year-old and a seven month old. My sister has a one-year-old, a four-year-old and a six-year-old and she homeschools. So we have to be able to, um, obviously nourish our kids with the right stuff. You know, we don't want to just be like, Oh, here's your iPad. Like, and I will say we all do that probably sometimes, but here's your iPad for the day, right? Because mommy has to work. So that's, I mean, that's what she's talking about. So we did create these like time blocking things for your kids as well. So I think that that's really the key is to be prepared. So if you know you have a busy day, um, prepare something for your kids the night before so that they can utilize these activities and then you can prioritize your day as well. So what I will do if I'm home with the baby and my husband's working, I will say, okay, if I have a Zoom, and she's seven months old, right? So her, she's not going to tolerate things very long, three to five minutes, probably. So if I have to jump on a zoom, I'm going to have six different activities for her set up that I can move her between and do different things with her during that time. And 
at the end, I might end up having to wear her or whatever, but I'm still, you know, showing up for that. But so, you know, that's kind of how I've been able to do it over the years. And we just kind of finally put it into something <laughs> to be honest, but time blocking, it's huge. And you, and, you know, I think a lot of times people don't use the time that they have. We all have the same 24 hours a day. So a lot of times I think you just don't utilize your time as best as you could. So being really aware of that, I think is important. the chat here if there's any other questions I'm I have a question yeah what because you talked about um the vision for yourself and even thinking about who you want to attract and recruit mm -hmm. tell us who you're looking for to recruit right now who who are you going after who are you wanting to um kind of pull into your team and develop okay so <laughs> this is it's so different from where I started right when I started I wanted to bring in um, young moms who were stay at home moms who had kids and they wanted to create like wealth for their family. Now I want to bring in women specifically who have been in like corporate jobs or careers who are, you know, 30 and 40 who want to, you know, diversify their income. So whether or not they want to stop working or not, I want to work with people who are higher level, who have that experience and work ethic who, you know, really want to make a change and commit to this. So um, it's completely different from what I, you know, who I was looking for before. So I'm hoping that's my goal now. I feel like it's clear that I want to work with people who, um, that I don't need them to retire if they don't want to. I just want to help them to diversify their income and see this as the opportunity that it is. Yeah. So then how do you respond? Because I, I, I see a lot of um, people on our team's with fearfulness when they approach someone like that. Mm -hmm. How are you how are you going to show up and how are you going to respond to let's say a fellow female entrepreneur who maybe has been in the corporate world or has maybe um, had her own business and might even currently be working at that business? What is your model for casting the vision for her? So I mean I'm going to ask a ton of questions because I can't cast a vision until I've been curious about them and learned about, you know, what she's doing. Um, you know, what her goals have been, you know, what is her family like, you know, there's, it, I feel like it's so encompassing. So I think you really have to be curious about people because I think where people go wrong is we come into these conversations thinking that, well, this is, this is it for them. Like this is going to be a great fit, but we don't really know that. Right. So we, we bring all of our assumptions to the table. So I think asking a lot of questions and seeing if they're a good fit first is where I start. Um, but then, you know, depending on if they're like, yeah, you know, I'm really not happy. You know, for me, I think cor corporate world, you know, there's not a lot of job security. We, um, and I have people on my team who talk about this all the time who are in corporate America. And they say, you know, my employer just laid off 20 people. My employer laid off hundred people. You know, even though I have this great title, like that doesn't ensure that I'm going to show up tomorrow. My job's going to be there. So talking about, you know, being your own boss and really controlling that environment, controlling how much money you make, controlling who you work with, I think is really important for people who are in this area in this season of their life. And then I talk a lot about diversifying your income. You know, it is smart to have multiple streams of income coming from your house um, through or into your house. So, you know, what would that look like for you and what would you do with it? You know, and ultimately I found it comes down to experiences and feelings. You know, that's what lays that foundation when we're talking about vision casting and um, helping people to see their vision. It, it's not like, this is what, you know, me and my sister talk, talk about a lot with products, even like, it's not just like, oh, I want to lose weight. When you start actually asking those specific questions, it's this mom wants to have energy to be able to actually show up on the field and jump around with her kids and, and, and have those experiences and those memories. It's not just losing weight. It, you know, that's part of it, but the experiences is what really. And so when I'm trying to recruit someone who maybe is already making six figures or has a great job, I'm talking about those experiences because I know for a fact they're missing them. Um, I have one more question. It's a little bit selfish. Uh, I think um, you and I have both been part of the product guru questions where people have a bazillion questions mm -hmm. about how should I take this? And I've got this person, how should I do this? And I love hearing you be like, yeah, I was here for the business. Um, talk, 
talk, can you maybe speak into the concept of um, when people get bogged down by product questions, like we know we have great products, we know our products are wonderful, but can you talk about just the danger of getting bogged down by being a product guru versus a business guru? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's important to to know where you put your time. And I am a firm believer, I didn't always used to be this way, but I think people need to earn your time. So um, <laughs> I think that what you would say to someone like that, if they continue to ask you the questions, right? It's like, hey, you know, if I was looking for this, here's some places I would look. So you're just kind of like deferring them somewhere else, unless it's something that only you know, and you just want to share a story an experience, but, and I do that with my team too. They'll be like, Hey, what's this, this, and I'm like, Hey, if I was going to look for that, I would look here. Um, or I would post here. I just kind of defer it. I mean, obviously I like answering it, but, um, I think that's, I think that's what your question is. I just try to defer and, um, move them into a way where they can learn themselves too. Yeah. I love that. I, I think, um, a lot of people <clears throat> feel like they need to be a product guru or a medical professional if they're going to be good at this. And, and I would always say, oh my goodness, you can find a lot of great answers about their products. But um, if you don't move into the business, being excited about the business, you can't raise up other product gurus. You know, they will always see you as being, oh, she's got the answers for everything. So yeah, absolutely. Um, any more questions? If you've got them, you need to ask them. Well, thank you guys so much for having me on. It's been awesome. Um, yeah. It thank nice you. To with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Loved hearing from you. Thanks for giving up some of your time blocking time to us today. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Thanks Bye, all. Have a good day.